be aware of, and this is why it's important to make sure you ask your patient what drugs they're taking, um, especially with gallium. Most of these drugs here, if they're taking this, there's certain drugs that they give patients, um, well, like for iron deficiency anemia, that's what I have listed here. If I give iron to a patient as a vitamin or mineral, it's going to compete for the binding sites, which means the gallium won't be taken out. And oh, let me go back here for a second. Okay, let's just remember something. Okay, we looked at the uh, distribution of gallium. Um, here's a typical gallium scan. Okay. Um, again, you see the lacrimal glands, you normally see sinus activity. Uh, sometimes you'll see activity in the breasts, especially if the woman is lactating. Uh, you'll see liver, uh, bone marrow, and uh, the kidneys. Okay. And normally the kidneys, in some books it says, I, I kind of go with this thing here, it says, uh, sometimes you'll see the genitalia also, but the kidneys up to 48 hours. Okay. So that means that if you see kidney at 72 hours, they probably have a kidney infection going on. Okay. So that was just one thing there. Um, but the drugs that you have to make sure the patient's not taking, um, any type of vitamin supplements that have iron in them. This iron dextran is probably the worst. You know, if you have iron deficiency anemia, then, you know, uh, the patient will be taking that. If the patient has taken too much iron, then this drug here, this disferal, uh, again, that, I don't know too many patients that have ever come in that have taken too much iron. But if you accidentally got iron poisoning, then you would be taking it. Mostly the chemotherapy agents, though, like methotrexate, um, this mercorethamine, and mincristine. All of these drugs are transported via transferrin to the cancer sites. So anything that takes up your uh, binding sites is going to prevent the uh, gallium from being transported. Uh, the steroids, okay, if you're taking anti-inflammatory, both white blood cell imaging and gallium imaging will not work very well. Okay, inflammation. Uh, if you're taking dilantin, what's dilantin used for? Well, remember it's also used for um, epilepsy. Yeah. Uh, ventricular arrhythmia and um, uh, epilepsy. You notice is it causes lymphoma-like uptake. So in other words, what will happen is you'll see these hot spots wrapped around the lymphatic chains around the aorta going up and down the body. And then all these other types of drugs here. Okay. Mostly your chemotherapy agents. So I put down here like uh, cyclophosphamate. Most of these were, were drugs that were actually developed during World War I as toxic um, chemicals to shoot at the bad guys. Or I guess they shot them at us too. But anyway. um, so, let's see what else we have here. So we've got gallium. And... Say most of the antibodies that I have listed here are ones that are mainly designed for 
for tumor imaging. You know, so um, you probably have not seen these, but Oncosynth. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else we, that was important. Oncosynth is for colorectal and ovarian cancer. Um, again, the bad thing about any type of um, anti antibody that we use, uh, the problem is you inject it once into the patient and then your body forms antibodies against it. So the second time you inject it, you may not get any results. Either that or the patient may have an allergic reaction. Okay. I think what else we have to do. And then, uh, I know the uh, imaging center that my daughter works at, they do a lot of these. I'm trying to think of, uh, this is mostly tumor. Um, well, why don't we go ahead and break for lunch, and then um, if you want to get back.